From the sealed tomb you shone forth, O life. Through closed doors you came to your disciples, O Christ God. Renew in us through them an upright spirit by the greatness of your mercy, O resurrection of all. Renew in us through them an upright spirit. It's the Tupari from the Pentecostarian for the Sunday of St. Thomas. So as I'm listening to and reading this, my first thought is, is through whom? Through the disciples? No, <laughs> that's not where the emphasis is. The emph emphasis in that little traparia is on the sealed tomb and the closed doors. From the sealed tomb you shone forth, O life. Through closed doors you came to your disciples, O Christ God. Several days ago I met with the Archbishop uh, for Calgary of the Anglican Church. He and I have become very good friends over the last number of years. This whole craziness called buying a new church has been for me the gift of a great relationship. Father Gregory, or Bishop Gregory, has come back fairly recently from a retreat that he experienced in England at a retreat center of the Jesuits where he practiced a life of silence for 36 days. Once a day for an hour, he met with his spiritual director and for one hour each day, he attended liturgy. Both of these were the two only times where he had any conversation or he spoke out loud. And the rest of the time, he was in silence. One of the things he spoke to me about was how for the last seven years down here in Calgary, his focus above all else has been being a bishop, doing administrative work, overseeing stuff. And he needed to have an opportunity to get back into connection with Jesus, even using the name Jesus was something that he was out of practice with. And something that from time to time I get out of practice with too. To use the name Jesus is to enter into a very intimate experience. Remember back in my early years, about the time that I was meeting Barbara, I spoke of Jesus Christ, the Christ, the Father, the Holy Spirit, but I never spoke to Jesus, the one who wants a close, intimate relationship with me. We come to church, we gather together, and we do wonderful music, wonderful scriptural passages, we pray, we experience wonderful ambiance sometimes, Sometimes not so great. But the Lord comes to us. Our Lord Jesus comes to us out of the sealed tomb. He comes to us through closed doors. He comes to hard hearts. And he strives to get inside those hard hearts. I think on so many levels, this 
pandemic virus experience that we are going through has been given as a gift to us who believe as an opportunity to experience what Paul says, God works for good in everything with those who love him and keep his commandments. Not everybody can receive good out of everything because they're not looking for how God works at transforming these things. Not everybody is willing to keep his commandments when bad things happen. When bad things happen, the person who keeps his commandments, first of all, is saying, God, you are Lord, King, and ruler over all things. And you love us. And we know that believing you, having faith in those concepts, stands above everything else. That's keeping his commandments. You are Lord. You are God. You are King. Your son died on the cross for me. And he rose from the dead to give me life. And he's there to keep, protect, and watch over me. That's keeping his commandments. Loving God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Knowing that anything he says about us comes to pass. Do we go through tribulations? Absolutely. During this Lenten and Paschal period, we were told, we shall encounter tribulation in this life. But he says, fear not, for I have overcome the world. Keeping his commandments means believing. I believe. I believe this to be true, God. I believe this to be right. And you are with us in everything. Thomas wasn't sure that he believed the disciples had serious questions about that. I want to see those wounds. I know he ended up on the tree. And there's nails went through his hands and his feet. And I know he got stabbed in the side and blood and water shone forth. Unless I see that, I'm not convinced. But when he saw, he was able to say, my Lord and my God, I believe you. And I believe you to be who you are. To believe. At one point in the scriptures, it says, the work of a Christian is to believe. Not crazy belief though any kinds of basis but belief that has been challenged that has been tested and accepted as being true because we've seen it to be true physically sometimes mentally sometimes in the actions that we've seen but we know these things to be true Thomas is a good example for us of the fact that doubt does not mean we do not have a relationship. To have a hard heart to refuse when we encounter and know the truth to be truth, that's a tougher place to be in. Father John Bear points out that it wasn't the betraying of Christ that did in Judas. 
Peter to do. But Judas had a hard heart. He could not believe that God could forgive him, that his Savior could forgive him. Let us pray that this time that we're going through be a time when our hearts get softened and that we see with clarity the good things that God is working at accomplishing in us in the midst of this. I miss you all very much. I dearly desire to see you at the earliest possible opportunity. There's sometimes ways we can meet at a distance for a little while without having been in liturgy. We will come together again. We will again give thanks to God together. We will again glory in his death and resurrection in the gift of his body and blood bestowed upon us, which assures us that we shall not perish but have everlasting life, and that we, together with him, are his body. Amen.